Hello, everyone, and welcome to Humble Beginnings Ministries. I'm your host, Pastor Stephen Woods, and today we are going to talk about something that has a lot to do with an issue that seems to be reoccurring, and that is pastors sleeping around with the women in the church. This type of behavior, right off the cuff, is something that is prohibited by Scripture. It is not allowed. It is therefore means for disqualification. Now, I want to say something here that there's an attempt by the church to set this man down and to let him know you are no longer the pastor here. But instead, his wife is going to stand up before the church and give some kind of message to say, you know what? It doesn't matter what you think. The pastor is just human. He's just a man. And I know that we're called to uh, be gracious and, and we're loving and all these things. She says this to the church, and thank God the deacon board doesn't buy it. Now, let me say something here. First and foremost, is the pastor human? Absolutely. But secondly, if he's not walking in holiness, he is disqualified for ministry. I don't care which way you cut it. He is no longer fit for public office. Why? Because he's called to be an example. And whether we want to believe it or not, when it comes down to adultery and sexual sin, that disqualifies a man. So many people have had affairs. There are many other pastors, which I won't mention by name, but that you can know of, maybe off the top of your head, you can think of. There are pastors locally as well as internationally that have committed adultery, have had affairs, and they're still in public office today. And that's a shame before God that we would even allow such things in the body of Christ. But what do we do? We support these ministries. We say, oh, but he's done so good. He's fed so many families. He's done. He's given so much to the poor. He's done so much for the community. And truthfully, that, you know what that results in? Utter ruin. Why? Because we compromise biblical standards. We are called in the body of Christ to uphold the biblical standard of holiness for everybody, not just the pastor, but everybody. And so we're going to tune into the video to where the mistress is going to come into the sanctuary and she is going to disrupt the service. Let's go in live and see exactly what happens here. So you can see here, there's a brawl between the, the mistress and the pastor's wife. They're going back and forth. They're pulling her out of the church. This woman comes in and says, I'm pregnant. I'm having the pastor's baby. Now, here we go. The chairman of the deacon ministry will provide. The chairman of the deacon ministry will provide. Let me show it to you. Here goes the pastor. The pastor is just completely going to try to justify his actions. Here we go. Here we go. He's been exposed. The right way is, the, 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 right, the right way is, number one, number one, the right way is, who, where is your church role? Where's your church role? You got to have an active church role. Where's your church role? Wow, here we go. No, no, He's doing everything in his power. I'm the pastor of the church. And if I, I, if I can't do that, I haven't done anything. I'm the pastor. Okay, come on, I'll talk to you. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Here it is. The pastor is trying to justify his actions. The police are evidently called because of everything that this big uproar in the church. And now he's willing to, to talk to the police. And now she's going to 
the mistress comes back inside after the police are in the office with the pastor to start fighting with the pastor's wife. This is just a disgrace. I'm going to fast forward it a little bit. But the church is going in an uproar. There's fighting between the pastor's wife and the mistress. Everybody is now evacuating the church. They're now dragging the woman out of the church. Thank God the police are taking her out. Look at how all of this chaos is going on because of the pastor and his ungodly lifestyle. It's obvious this man is not fit for ministry and he needs to be taken out. Let's see, fast forward the clip. Cops tell everybody to get out. And it, it ends in outer chaos, okay? But thankfully, you know what ends up happening? they end up firing the pastor, which is the best thing that could happen in that case regarding his position. However, the pastor in his ungodly lifestyle, there was a, dis there was a disclaimer that was issued that said that the pastor, he actually, they said, we fired him. He, he can go on now and do his thing with, uh, his mistress, he can go ahead and have whatever affair he's going to have outside of the church and with his wife who justified his actions. But here's the thing. We are called, number one, to call someone like that to repentance. That they would turn away from sin, that they would turn away from the rebellion, they would repent. Now this woman has got to deal with the consequences, number one, of her own actions, but also the pastor, her husband, has a mess on his hands. He, number one, needs to repent before God, but what does that look like? Well, he's got to first deal with the fact that he sinned against God and his wife. And now there's a, another party involved because this woman's pregnant with his child. Again, this seems to be very common. And I think that's why we justify these kind of things, this type of lifestyle. When I say we, I'm saying those in the body of Christ who, are, who have had pastors and they are still listening to listening to them preach on a Sunday morning. Your pastor has nothing to preach about if he has committed sexual sin and violated his marriage. Come on. What do we... The way that the church is going right now is sad. So many people are trusting these leaders. They're following them. Looking at them like, oh, well, the average man slips up. No, that's not okay. There's a standard in God. Yes, there's grace. Yes, there's all of that. But shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. And these men who fall into sexual sin, committing adultery, need to sit down somewhere. They need to repent of their sin, turn from their sin, and turn to God. Because you know what? They will give an account. And so will all of them, you who are sitting up under these leaders who have committed and violated scripture in such a way that is just so, 
this is just disgusting. But we follow these men. We allow them to stay in office. We support their ministries. And God is not pleased. How do we know? Read 1 Timothy chapter 3. Read what the qualifications of a pastor are. Pastors need to be held accountable to the standard. And guess what? If you're not living that standard, you have failed. Miserably. You have been disqualified. You are as one beating the air. You're running in vain because you yourself have been disqualified. I am your host, Pastor Stephen Woods. I pray that this video has blessed you in some kind of way. I'm reacting to this because there are so many scandals out there. So many pastors who have violated scripture. And there are so many people in the church who are affected by this kind of lifestyle. People are losing any type of respect for those who hold office. Why? Because of this kind of stuff. The way these men are living their lives. They're not living to glorify Christ. They're living to please their flesh. And let me say this. Women in the church, single, married, and otherwise, are off limits. When you're a pastor and you have a wife, you've got the woman you need. The, the, the women in the church do not belong to you. They belong to Christ. And you're... You should never put yourself in a vulnerable position to where you would fall into sexual sin with one of them. I don't care what is happening in your relationship with your wife. There's no excuse for it. We need to be transparent and real with our wives and be open and honest and be held accountable. And if you and your wife need counseling, get counseled. But Never at any time is it okay for a pastor to discuss his personal life with his, about his wife with another woman. And so pastors will say, I'm just a man, I'm human. My wife didn't understand me. This other woman did. That's a lie. Maybe you and your wife are not seeing eye to eye, but that doesn't give you an excuse to go outside of your marriage and sleep with someone else. It doesn't give you an okay to go and have sex with a woman that's not your wife and impregnate her. And the sad thing is that the wife would condone it like her husband's David with Bathsheba. God calls us to holiness, to Christ-likeness. And it doesn't matter how many people respond to this video and say, oh, you're just pious and you're just pompous about your, you're just so much better than this guy. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is that we are called as pastors to live a holy life in, in a Christ-like life. And when we step outside of that, what do you got left to preach about? And for all of you who are willing to sit up under these jack leg preachers, who are living this type of lifestyle, stealing your money, telling you that if you don't tithe, you're going to hell and that the judgment of God is on you. You know what? That's your own ignorance, right? That's your that's to your own uh, demise. We are called to a biblical standard. We are called to holiness and Christ likeness. We are called to speak the truth in love. And I refuse to sit here with stuff like this going on in the body of Christ as a pastor and say, you know what, this is, and not just turn a blind eye for real. Wake up, church. Wake up. We're called to judge these situations. So I'm already prepared for all you that will comment and say, oh, you're, you're not supposed to judge and God is a loving God. Yes, he's loving and he's holy. And that's why people like this, if they don't repent, they've proven that they never belong to Christ and they're on their way to a devil's hell. I'm your host, Pastor Stephen Woods. I pray that this blesses you. Like, subscribe to this channel and share it with others. And I pray that this would be a blessing, an eye-opener for others, and a warning to pastors 
who are walking in disobedience to the Lord and prayerfully you will God will grant you the grace to repent you will turn from your sin you will be restored to your wives and you will live a godly life in Jesus Christ what a blessing it is to be in Christ our identity in Christ that we can be forgiven there's restoration but there shouldn't be a restoring to the public office to a pastor who has sexual issues who has trouble walking in purity before the Lord and in his marriage I pray that you're, you'll have a blessed day and I pray that the Lord would strengthen pastors to persevere until he comes. God bless you.